Hello and welcome to this very special bonus episode of Real Life Ghost Stories. And in this episode, I sit down and have a chat with the wonderful Hannah Bichkowski and Susie Priest. They are the presenters, the hosts of the podcast Ghost Huns. Hannah and Susie are comedians, basic huns and horror stands and they bring you the world's creepiest ghost stories. In their words, they get haunted so you don't have to. It was an absolute joy to speak to Hannah and Susie. They were just wonderful, wonderful people to speak to. Hilarious, brilliant, really generous with their time. And it was an absolute joy for me. Just to say before we launch into the episode, this episode was recorded remotely using StreamYard. So the sound quality is a little different than you might usually expect. It sounds absolutely fine and is absolutely fine to listen to but it's just different than the normal episodes i hope you enjoy this episode and go and check out ghost tons wherever you get your podcasts i will leave the links to everywhere that they are in the description of this episode and i hope you enjoy it hello and welcome i'm joined by the lovely hannah and susie and we're going to get straight into it because you guys have a busy day ahead of you so who are you and what is your podcast it's very existential way to start i really need to change that as an opening question (laughs) who are we (laughs) who even are you I, do you know what? I don't even know who I am anymore. Uh, we are ghost huns. Yes, we are. Um, that's Hannah Fair. Bichkowski. Yeah. You're, you're Susie Priest. Thank you. God, that was awful. That wasn't very to, slick. We need to get slicker at this. Uh, you um, know, considering we're podcasters, we're not very good at yeah, it. Yeah, absolute shite. Um, but yeah, we're ghost huns. So we just sort of, yeah, have a, a lovely little podcast. <laughs> that's, that's us. It, yeah. Well, why I always describe it is we tell scary stories and we try and contact the dead. Yeah, and we also have a bit of a laugh. Like we we try and find the lighter side to because we love we love getting scared. Um, but as we're comedians, we kind of bring a bit of that into it as well. Um, so I've got a question that actually wasn't on my list. Um, so question number two, I'm throwing you a curveball. Are you long term spooky bitches? Oh my god, a hundred. <laughs> Sorry, just percent. You. That's right. I used to when um, when I was little, I used to fall asleep to like scary movies. How creepy is that? Like, actually, like that's my comfort blanket is scary films. That's not that's a bit off, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. There's something a bit weird. Yeah, I, I think I'm the kind of the same thing. Like I've always been a like I would always take my more gullible friends to play in a graveyard. <laughs> like the ones who are a bit cooler and were like, should we just go and hang out with boys? I was like, mm, yeah, but I'll get Sophie to come to the graveyard. She'll always come. And she'd be like, why are we here again? And I was like, to find the ghost. <laughs> you stupid bitch, Sophie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She actually has like recently been like, why did we do that? <laughs> and you're like, I don't know, weren't we so silly? <laughs> I still do it now when I'm 35. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I also wonder if there was like a correlation between um, being a spooky bitch and absolutely categorically not hanging around with boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah, it explains why I didn't have a boyfriend for many years. Oh, I just got freaky with it when I started being interested in boys. I was like, I'll do boys and the ghosts all at the same time. <laughs> I'll take you down the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, yeah, we have had sex. I, have, well, I say we, I'm not speaking for both of us. But I have done it in a graveyard before. Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, I have. I don't but know I how I But I think that was more that. to do with the fact that I was like young and living with my parents and didn't have anywhere to go, do you know what I mean? So bottle of white lightning down the graveyard. And... <laughs> yeah. In her homeless days. Hannah. I'm so sorry. I think we're already bringing the tone down of the podcast. <laughs> You're not bringing the tone down. I greatly appreciated it. And I was about to say, <laughs> firstly, it's sort of either, you know, backseat of your car or graveyard. Yeah. And I think graveyard exactly. is exponentially cooler. And secondly, it's more there's definitely, there's definitely like a 250 pound take a break story in that. Just oh, 100%. oh, yeah. I shagged with the dead. Yeah. I, to be honest, now that Hannah's like a I mean? mini celebrity, having done the traitors, uh, I'm I'm going to sell that story and make some cash off it. <laughs> <laughs> ah. So it's good to know, actually. Yeah. Very good. What about you? Are you have you been a spooky bitch? Uh, yeah, I was also a bit weird. I just was also a bit weird. Yeah. Into scary movies. Loved things like The Craft desperately wanted to have oh, like, powers God. and neve campbell was like the poster girl for spooky bitch do you know what i mean like scream oh my god she's she... oh yeah she was she's just great isn't she yeah love her she's just, always like very much in pain yeah constipated <laughs> in pain look 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Like the one just at the same look every time. She never looked happy or excited by anything. It was mind you, to be fair, the film did start with her mates being murdered, so she has good resting crying face. Yeah. yeah. You know, women are you're meant to be sad all the time. You know what I mean? You're not meant to look happy and excited. No. no. Life is a chore. Yeah, yeah it is actually really being hard. a woman is just pain. That's how I've woken up today. <laughs> you can tell we're both going through our menstrual cycles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What is your favorite scary movie? Oh my god, that was that straight out of Scream. Mm. I, What's your favorite? I scary think mine movie? is actually Scream. Yeah, it just keeps giving. Have you watched Scream Six? Yeah. No, you said you'd come to see that in the cinema with me. And I did. I think you did, but I'm no. I'm, I'm I mean, bit... I did say it, but I never did. I never followed through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I will watch it with you now. Well, not now because we've got lots to do. But night. Yeah, I'd, I'd appreciate. Have that. you seen? Have you? You've seen it before. It's like. It is it's so good. Considering it's sixth in a franchise, it is fucking mm. brilliant. It just keeps giving. And do you know what? It's kind of it's kind of embraced its com its own comedy. It's kind of been like, do you know what? We're not gonna keep it. But it still remains pretty scary. Yeah, and I have such a nostalgia about Scream. Like I remember like oh, I, would, yeah. I would watch it when my parents thought I was watching like Animals of Farthing Wood. And actually I was getting on screen the like knockoff video that we got from like our trip to Bangkok. And I was like, yeah, or like, you know, like those shit DVDs you get in markets that are like, have been filmed in a cinema. And like, I just, I loved Scream so much. And the bit, I've never got it out of my head, that bit where she gets stabbed through the toilet. Oh the yeah, that's Scream 2. Scream 2. Mm. Oh my God, a classic. So are you both saying Scream then? I do keep getting confused though between Scream and Scary Movie. And then I'm like, oh, do you remember that time they fucked? And then all that. And then like, no, how that wasn't. I was like, oh yeah, that's the wrong one. <laughs> I don't, oh, there are so many good ones. The others? I like a B movie as well. Have you ever seen Aqua Slash? No, but it sounds absolutely incredible already. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Aqua Slash is amazing. It's basically a scary film that happens in a water park. And then people just get like lopped off. They get like, they go down water slides that have got knives in the middle of them. Oh, Amazing. it's brilliant. I'm, I'm writing this down. Yeah. Aqua Slash and Rubber. We've talked about that in the last episode, didn't we? Mm. Rubber. Have you seen that? Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> A killer tire. Yes, please. <laughs> Every day, all day. I really like Cherry Falls as well. Have you ever seen I've that? not seen that. That's a bit weird, Cherry Falls. It's a bit of a weird... For, I think like an old teacher recommended it to me or fancied. So I was like, oh my God, I love this film because he recommended it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I loved? The Haunting with Catherine Zeta-Jones. I Because that, that ticked all my spooky bitch boxes when I was a teenager. It was like, uh, you had the bit of like, you know, the fit people in it. And you're like, you're oh my so God, they're right. amazing. They're so like goals. And then you had the like the haunted bitch, Eleanor, who was like the every girl. And you're yes. like, oh, Eleanor. And they're all yes. like, oh my God, it's so oh, good. So right. It was brilliant. Do you remember that Catherine is, Zeta Jones oh, chucking a suitcase yeah. on the bed? And I was like, oh, oh my it's God. So, it's just a bit, it's a bit sexy. It's a bit funny. It's a yeah. bit scary. It's a bit, and it's got that like old haunted house. Oh, it's so good. Oh, yeah, that, actually it. that for me, that takes me back. Uh, mine is Dog Soldiers. Uh, anybody who's listening will know that. I've I seen Dog Soldiers. That? Oh, it's, it's an old British, I mean old, it was like kind of early 2000s British horror film that was, all filmed up in Scotland and it's about werewolves and it is oh. my oh hands down oh it is the, one of the best horror films ever I absolutely love it I mean the werewolves look like absolute shit but not the point but it doesn't let the film down does not let the film down oh my because like you know that. when I'm like in Jeepers Creepers you see the, the monster and you're like oh yeah. gutted Jeepers Creepers used to really scare me Jeepers that creepers. That yeah, that's the thing. It builds the dread really nicely, and you're like, "Oh, this is going to be great." And then you're like, "Oh, I didn't need to see the monster." I think straight the strangers might be another one as well. Don't know if it's fa my favorite, but it is one of the most. Ter that's the one you haven't seen, isn't it? With Liv Tyler, and mm -hmm. that is one of the most terrifying things I've ever watched. Yeah. There is that great meme about Jeepers Creepers where uh, it's like. He has a, a personalized license plate, plate and everything, the monster. And it's like, how the fuck do you get that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when did he like register his tax certificate and he's like, oh, I'll take that, please. Yeah. Where did he get his debit card from to pay for it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the best thing about being a podcaster? 
Oh, I'm just obsessed with it. Yeah, it's like, like it's like I mean, I didn't realize how much admin was involved in podcasting. To be honest with you, but yeah. um, it is. That, it's like, all encompassing. We get to do isn't it? everything that we want to. Like you just get to do what you want to do, don't you? Yeah, I like the control that you have of it because you're like we're basically living out our dreams, which yeah. is going to visit like haunted locations, yeah. spooky places. And I, I just have always loved, and I, we've always loved ghost stories and the idea of being like, we can do this and actually maybe make a living from it. And like, yeah. I just love the freedom it gives you to kind of follow what you've always wanted to do and find other people and like a little gang who are like, oh my God, me too. And I, yeah, I just quite like that you can, like you said, do what you want with it. You can kind of, from one episode to another, you can be like, oh, we'll change direction, we'll do this. But yeah, I do, I love how freeing it is. And obviously, the follow-up question, what's the worst thing about being a podcaster? (laughs) It's a lot of work, isn't it? Yeah, it's loads of work. (laughs) I think also it's, I suppose it's the same as as running your own business. Like, I remember when I used to work for other people, before I was even a comedian or anything like that, I just didn't give a shit. I just did not, I could not have cared less. And I think that's something that you have to, that you have to not let get to you. Like, if we have people like, doing things for us or contract, you know, we're getting people to do work for us or whatever. They're not going to care as much and that's okay. But we get so annoyed if people don't, like we do, don't we? We're like, Mm. because we're so passionate about it. I think it's that business side as well because you're being a creative, but you also have to be business minded. And it's really weird because it's hard to go from that like creative mindset to all right, we have to do invoices or we have to pay this or we have to do... It's really... It's, so it is yeah. a bit... It's like you're running your own business, yeah. isn't it? And It's like it's like you're, you're... It's like we're every single person in a business doing... Yeah. Yeah, it's a startup, <laughs> isn't it? And you're, it, I mean, you're doing it on your own. So, like, that must be hard. Yeah. And I... Do you know what? Do you know what it is? I'm a, I'm a control freak. And it's like you said, yeah. I, if I hire somebody to edit the podcast or to whatever i'm sitting there and i'm like what are you doing how how are you yeah. editing it that's not how i yeah. would do it what if it's not exactly the way i would do it and then i yeah. seem to spend more time kind of worrying about what they're doing mm. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. rather yeah. than yeah. using all the time that i've saved to do other things it's a, it's a funny it's a funny one podcast and i think the perception outside is oh you just sit down record and Put it up yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. You just sit yeah. in your living room and just press play and you're like, it's not that. It's so much more. It and keeps then we me up at night. Comedy is also something that we're very passionate about. So we're, we're, we're also trying to have that career branch. Yeah. As well as doing this. And then it's just like, we actually don't don't have mm. the time to do it. And it's... But for me, it's, it's just, I'm, I'm literally just always like, I'm reading a ghost story. I'm yeah. putting on a TikTok. I'm like, and I'm like, Jesus, fuck. Like, yeah, I've become the spooky lives. bitch I always thought I would, but I didn't realise, like, it's it's taken over oh. most of my, like, waking hours. I'm like, oh, what about this for the podcast? Like, it just becomes everything you think about. And because we've chosen ghost stories, you're like, wow, that's, yeah, yeah. I've really delved deep now. But I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. That's it, isn't it? You, we, you, you know, you complain about it and then you're like, but I also love it really because like you said, you get all this freedom and creative control and you guys in Ghost Tons, it like obviously incorporates a lot of comedy because you're both comedians. Yeah. What is your backgrounds outside of the world of being a spooky bitch? I, I mean, I, well, I'm a full-time comic now, but I used to, um, I used to work with people who were dying, ironically. So, uh, <laughs> really... Very really spooky. went really really contrasting and then i was like i'm sick of this now i'm gonna try and make people laugh um so yeah i used to work with people who were dead basically and then i decided that i wanted to do stand-up so i started doing that and then uh wanted to make it my full-time job so i was lucky enough to go on the tv show obviously then that really helped build my profile and yeah i'm going full on full-time comedy i'm podcasting yeah um yeah so what my background um so i i was like an actor for a bit and then i i found it just dreadfully boring when people would talk about shakespeare plays and i realized i just didn't give a shit and i was like i think i'm in the wrong <laughs> in the wrong like creative thing and like I, I i still love it and i would like i would love to like you know have my own sitcom and like whatever or like even have our own tv yeah. show and kind of use that in it but I just kind of, I felt like a bit of an imposter and I was a bit like, I'm just not, 
wired in the same way. I just found it a bit wanky sometimes. And I yeah, just you're couldn't... not a wanky actor, are you? No. I mean, you did a Debenhams Christmas advert, though, which is big. Yeah, shout out to Debenhams who got me in for their 2021 Christmas campaign. Look at that. Oh, go on, <laughs> Debenhams. It's yeah. very, it's Susie like looking at some saucy lingerie and looking over at her husband and being like, oh, you shouldn't have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's absolutely ridiculous. It's great. No, it's really good. Uh, Debenhams Christmas advert is a big deal. No, it is actually. I'm really glad you said that, Hannah. I'm glad that gets out there. Um, I was the dancing mum. I danced around a Christmas tree very well. Yeah, you did. Um, but then they didn't put me on the big billboards around the tube. And instead they went for like a boohoo advert with a bitch who looked exactly like me. Oh, uh, boohoo can get in the fucking bin. I was like, <laughs> they've gone for her and not Slander. me. Oh, I was fuming. Um, so yeah, I still do a bit of like voiceover -y stuff and like a few acting gigs here and there, which is just more immersive-y. I don't know. Every now and then I'll be like, someone I know will be like, oh, can you do this random billionaire's garden party? And I'll be like, yeah, sure. It, that's It's that kind of, I think that's so nice though. It's the same as comedy and like this. It's like just work comes in and you do it and then you're not. What I hated more than anything was the nine to five. I yeah. fucking, like it, it sent me a bit mental. Like I'd go down existential roads and be like, what is the point in this? What are we doing? We're just like zombies getting up at a time we don't want to get up to go to a job we don't want to go to. Mm. Like, oh, we're not supposed to, humans aren't supposed to just spend their lives fucking miserable. And I know some people obviously do enjoy that kind of stability and that kind of work mm. but it sent me a bit loopy like a little bit mental i think i probably should have been on some meds because yeah. i did go down a weird road do you find um i mean before i ask that you're also working with dead people which is you know notoriously cheery so yes. i can imagine that brings up a lot of stuff too <laughs> um do you do you th not find though because i i have so much respect for stand-up comics because i just i just it to me it is the most petrifying thing that you could do like give me give me shakespeare any day like yeah it's easy but stand-up comedy is just terrifying like it must be really scary to take that leap and go no i'm gonna i'm actually gonna pursue this as a career i think at the start it is like that i know i felt like that when i was a bit like okay i'm gonna transition from one thing to another and it took me about two years to be like i, I can't i can't i can't and then as soon as you do it and you're like oh it's actually all right and it like the fear is mostly the it's the dread it's like the same in horror yeah. films it's the dread of something happening that is the worst part and then when it actually you're up on stage and you're doing it you're like oh i yeah. love it it's fine and you're yeah. just having a chat with people and I still get I still get the nerves, especially for a gig that is like if it means important it's and important, it's yeah. a it's a good one and you know you have to deliver and it you do get that kind of like nervy stage fright thing. But I do But it makes you feel alive. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's about it's like living for that adrenaline, isn't it? And wanting to feel like I suppose it is wanting to feel alive. I don't know, maybe it's something to do with that. But when you st when you first start, you don't think that you just kind of I think you only decide that you're gonna start doing gigs like professionally like we do when you get good so the pressure's not there until you're like oh i'm good enough to do this now to for people to actually pay me mm. so that you don't feel like a complete imposter i've seen some comedy that i'm like get down <laughs> off that stage all right you, yeah this no stop it this is not for you oh there's so much of that oh there's so much of that there's there's so, so much of our days mugging them off to be yeah honest. oh my god <laughs> It's just astounding because you're just like, you know, and everyone's like, oh, it's subjective. And I'm like, no, 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 that was objectively shite. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that was proper. And they're shit. getting paid more than I am. What the fuck is happening? Yeah. But then that's kind of the, <clears throat> the name of the game, and it's sometimes yeah. people arguing that it's going to happen, unfortunately. There's a great joy in slagging people off. I'm sorry, I have to say it. Oh, there God. Is. Especially with your mate who you know it's safe with. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing better, is there? We slagged somebody off. It's like somebody off once. And then a couple of days later, I was like, so I'm going to be doing some work for this person. Do you think I'm a sellout? <laughs> Susie was like, yes. <laughs> yes, but take the money. Yes, but take the money. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. But, you know, that's kind of um, that's kind of the point of it. I mean, it is a stressful <clears throat> existence sometimes. One day you can be like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I absolutely love it. I'm so glad I found it. It's it's my mm. it's my favourite thing. And how, I'm great at it. I'm good at it. I'm working hard. And the next day, you're like, oh, my God, I'm the worst. So it's kind of... Yeah, you of, are up and down. You have to kind of find what's... Like, the appropriate way to keep your mental health in check, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I, mine is, like, not looking at social media or, like, anyone I follow, I mute. And I just don't... Not that I don't care about people that are doing well, but I, I will start comparing yeah and i don't 
I don't need that. Because mm. that, I just, it's really hard. Because you start, like if someone was to tell me a year, like two years ago, that this is where I'd be at, I'd have been like, I'm at, my dreams have come true. Yeah. So I want to appreciate that, not sit here and be like, all right, what's next? What's the, what, I need more, I need more, I need to do better, I need to do more, I need to, because like you, you, you need to just take it. I don't know, I've gone off on a bit of a tangent. But anyway. No, no. It's like, a fun job, isn't it? I just really? want to be able to quit my temp job. That's my main aim. I'm like, if I can get rid of my reception job, yeah. <laughs> then I would have felt like I've got to a certain other level. I'm like, that's all I need to do. I still think your temp job is good though, because it's kind of like you only do it when you need to. Yeah, And I then guess. you can have a couple of weeks yeah. if, you, if work comes in. It's quite nice, but yeah, I do know what you mean. Soon. that Listen, that's the next step. We're, exactly. we're putting good vibes out to the universe. And so uh, as you guys, you know, talk about spooky shit all the time, have either of you ever had a paranormal experience? I mean, you definitely I have. have, yeah. Go on. But then I start second sense? guessing myself and I'm like, I don't know if it's... I, I, so basically, anyway, I'll, I'll tell you the story. So at my parents' house, which is where I live half of the time now, um, they've they've kind of like renovated it where and it's it's a really old house it was built in like 1904 and there's been a few weird experiences in the house um like my mum when my brother was a baby and we were like my my sister and I were little she thought she saw a little boy running up the stairs and round the corner because it's like you saw the stairs the day, don't you? Mm. They, they go up and then they turn back so you can't see if you're going around the other side but she was kind of like, I'm not sure, I don't know, I did have a baby and like, you know, your mind can play tricks on you sometimes, but she was like, I'm sure I saw it. And I was like, that's that's weird. Anyway, another time I thought I was doing my makeup in my bedroom when I was about 16 and I was doing, I had a massive mirror on the windowsill and I could see my bedroom door through the mirror. And I was putting my makeup on and I saw my dad walk past my bedroom to go into the bathroom in the mirror. And I heard him turn the taps on and then I shouted at him because I wanted him to give me a lift to my mate's house. So he's probably down a field drinking white lightning, actually. So I shouted at him to like, because I wanted him to give me a lift. And uh, I didn't get an answer. I went into the bathroom. No one there. No taps on. I went downstairs and I was like, where's dad? And my mum was like, oh, he'll be home in an hour, he said. Like, he just called. And I was like, okay. So who was so the man? So who was the man? And then more recently, since we've been doing this podcast... I was at my mum and dad's and they've had the kitchen redone and there's a side, it goes, there's like a side garden and a back garden at my parents and they've had the whole kitchen like moved out to the side and back a bit. So now part of the, where the dining table is now where we all sit and work and eat is on the old garden and we don't really know what's buried in the, in the garden. It's all a bit like, we just don't know what's there. And then I was sat at the table and I just felt someone literally tap my leg twice. Like it was like someone had just walked past and tapped it. It was that, like I, as soon as it stops, I could still feel it there. Like the nerves, I could still feel, I could still feel it in my leg. And I said, I'm sure someone, I'm sure I've just felt someone tap me. And my mum went, I feel it all the time. I've just never said anything because I didn't want to freak anyone out. <laughs> but I think she was like, but I feel like it's really reassuring and it's really like, I don't mind it but I just feel a tap on my shoulder when I'm working or whatever. It was really weird. And then the next day, um, me and Susie were actually going on a ghost hunt. So I jokingly pulled out some sage that I bought for a laugh in the kitchen. And I was like, because my dad was like, why are you ordering all this shit to my house? Mm. So I pulled, <laughs> pulled it out and I took a step to my right and I bumped into somebody and I went, oh, sorry. And there was nobody there. But I felt, you know, when you bump in, you can feel an arm, you can feel a leg, you can feel the shape of a person. And there was just nobody there. And I, and I went, oh, sorry. Like So weird. But I, and I could just, it's so straight. There's, de there's something in that house. I, I, sure. To be fair, when I, when I went to your house the other day, I was like, this, there's something, it does feel spooky. It looks like the Charmed house. Have you, have you seen Charms? Yeah, it looks like the Charmed <laughs> house. There is a vibe. There's a vibe. I don't think I have had any experiences like that. I wish I had. I don't think you're open to it enough. Susie's most, I thought I was really skeptical. Susie is way more skeptical than I am. You want it to be real, don't you? Mm. Oh, 100%. I think I want it so much that I kind of, like, it's not everything that we see. Like if somebody's like, oh, I felt this or I saw an old Victorian woman. And I'm mm -hmm. like, no, you didn't. You're a liar. <laughs> like, I don't believe everything, but I do want 
I do really want it to be, I do really want it to be real. Yeah. I don't know. I felt like I've heard the stories and like the things that people say about mediums and psychics and things that come true and people have predicted stuff and, you know, all those things that you're like, I cannot explain that. And I do believe it's true, but I've never personally had a thing where I'm like, I saw something or I felt things, you know, and you're like, I feel like it's a, it's a creepy house or whatever. And you feel on edge, but that might be just my caveman spidey senses kicking in of like you know if you're in the dark what is out there to come and kill you but I don't think I've nothing's happened where I'm like okay I saw something like a, a glass flew across the room or something but I want it so bad I don't think you can I, I think one day there's going to be a scientific reason as to why we can still feel energy I don't think it's going to be floating ghosts with like I don't think it's a visual thing because I don't think scientifically that's possible mm. but i do think that there is going to be something about an energy still being there or still you know i, I think there's got I, th I just think there's got to be like people's personalities and all these little weirdnesses about us i don't think it. i think there's got to be something about like spirits and i don't know i think mm. it's got to go somewhere i think we just don't know where it goes or how or I mean, we they say we only like access like 10% of our brains. So why shouldn't there be... And aliens probably exist because we're, we're a planet in a universe. Like there are so many more weird things happening out there than ghosts. Oh my God, we're on aliens now. Actually, <laughs> and, no, uh, get, get your tinfoil hats out, everyone. <laughs> uh, but there's just so much... When you start thinking about it, it gets a bit weird, doesn't it? But when there's so <laughs> many more weird things out there than a, than a spirit energy. So why shouldn't they be? Have real? you had? Have you had a, an experience? Oh, yeah, I had a really. <gasps> I'm. I'm like. I'm a total skeptical bitch. Like I, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm looking at stories and I'm like, whatever. It's mental health related. Blah blah blah. blah. But I had. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I used to work in an old Victorian asylum. Um, oh when my I, god! Yeah, back when I was living in Ireland, and um, I basically like one day, one morning, I looked up and saw a woman like looking at me out a window and she was like really pale had a white dress long black hair I mean it, it's so cliche really but she, really she just had dark shadows for eyes <gasps> and there was another girl with me I didn't say anything I was just like oh and uh a couple of minutes later the other girl that was with me just legged it just fucking ran and she was oh, like did you not nice. see that girl <laughs> oh um, you both yeah, saw was, him yeah we both saw it it was very strange and then about a year later i was telling a nurse that story and he um like raised his arm and it was all goosebumps and he was like i see her all the time but he hadn't told anybody because he was like this is this is too weird i'm just not going to say anything but yeah so i i sort of like that i you know had that experience and i was a bit like oh maybe maybe there is you know other weird shit going so on that, that has just... and that's has that still not made you fully believe are you like it was do you think it was in your mind also no what do you think it was <laughs> i i think like you i think places have a particular energy um and obviously like an old victorian asylum like it was fucking awful like the things mm. you know the things that happened there were horrendous and that has to leave something behind do you know what i mean yeah so, exactly I don't know. Um, so you guys do like a monthly Patreon ghost hunt, right? Yeah. yeah. What is your dream paranormal location to investigate? One of mine, I really wanted to go to 30 East Drive. And we're going. We're I think, going. In September, Bye -bye. Which is very exciting. Yeah. But we also wanted to go to Romania, didn't we? <laughs> to be honest, yeah, it was really weird. I was like, I, I texted Hannah saying... I think we should go to Romania. And you were like, oh my God, that's really weird. I literally thought that yesterday or yeah. something. And I was like, uh, that is my dream. Again, like I I'm basic with my imagination. I'm like, I want to go to see Dracula. I want bats, I want <laughs> fog. I want a big yeah, haunted house. I want, I want the organ playing trees. as the door creaks open. Yeah. I want all of that. And I, I think Romania, apparently there's a haunted forest in Romania. And Yvette Fielding talked all about it on her podcast. Um, by the way, she needs to move aside. I'm the new Yvette. Yeah. I, I even look like her a bit. Yeah, Yvette's <laughs> gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Luckily for me. Sorry, sorry, Yvette. Luckily um, for me, Derek Akor is dead and he's the one that I would be playing. You could step so. right into those shoes. Yeah. I mean, um, he just chatted a lot of shit, really, didn't he? So you could say whatever you wanted. He was brilliant, though, yeah. wasn't he? What a show. <clears throat> what what a man. The, the, the guy we did the ghost hunt with in London um, was one of the historians, like the historical researchers on one of the most haunted series. So he met them loads and he was like, he told us so many funny anecdotes did, yeah. about like Derek getting possessed. And apparently this gay showrunner was like, don't worry, he's just possessed. <laughs> when like the cleaner was freaking out and like, honestly, he was so much funny. David's told- possessed, David's possessed, stay away. It's <laughs> yeah. all right, he's just possessed. <laughs> Who's David? Da- what did I say? David. David, Derek. Jesus Christ. Oh, Apparently, though, he was a proper <clears throat> lovely man. Yeah. With any of those, like, paranormal TV shows, there there probably is an emphasis on, like, you got to make shit happen, all right? This oh, my God, of course. Oh, come on. Yeah, I know. Of course. Good, a good to. showman. Yeah, I'd yeah. be doing the same thing. I'd absolutely be doing the same yeah, thing. Yeah, I'd be rolling on the floor, yeah. frothing at the mouth, yeah. if it meant listeners' content. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> So is there, like, a famous paranormal case that intrigued you over the years? I think um, it's went well. Oh, so now it's a bit cliche, but the Amateurville house was always. I was like, there are so many people who've seen so many. Th- is it is it just that everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon, or is it because people go there and they start they they know about it before they go, so they their mind plays tricks on them? Like, what is it? Is there something actually there, or is it is it an example of what happens when you convince enough people to lose their shit? Because either way, it's very interesting. You know what I mean? Like what your mind can do when you're... Imagine, it was the same when, when we've been ghost hunting. Whenever we try to go to sleep after, my mind is just like, there's a man in the corner, there's a man in the corner. Mm, you, don't mm. close your eyes because when you open your eyes, someone's going to be stood up. And then my heart, next thing I know, my heart's racing and I'm seeing things left, right and centre that, that aren't even there. And I'm like, it's m- absolutely mad that these four walls can, and my imagination can yeah. make that. Do you know where I want to go? I want to go to... um. So obviously obsessed with Uncanny, like fucking love it. Oh my god! And yeah. ser- series one, when the was it room six one what six eleven or something? Yeah, yeah, the Northern Irish one. And I was like, I want to go there. Like I like it's all not these. Down. Yeah, but I want to. I want to get the energy. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? I want to go all these places they talk about. Just the little stories. I'm like like the recent one where that woman's like real time getting haunted by the little girl. Which one? Oh yeah, the recent uncanny. Yeah, I'm just because I'm so obsessed with the podcast. I'm just a bit like, I would love to go real time to like a house that is currently haunted. Like, there's the Borley rectories and all of that, yeah. and you're just like, yeah. But I want, I want something a bit like, shit. Something could get thrown at my head. Yeah, I want to see something get lifted up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want a risky haunting. Yeah, I want something to get lifted up and chucked at me. Mm. Or that little um, bothy that he talked about. Do you remember those like hikers oh, yeah. went into the middle of nowhere? Jesus, fuck, I want to go there. I mean, I'd hate it, but I really want to go there. See, I do that as well, where I'm like, oh, I'd love to go to all these places. When I get to said places, I'm like, I don't like being uncomfortable. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, a bit get cold. The fuck out. This is too much. I want to go for five minutes and then I want to get back in the car and go home. (laughs) If one cryptid was proven to be real, what cryptid would you want it to be? Uh, Look, it's Nessie, isn't it? Let's get Nessie (laughs) the recognition she deserves because that bitch is real and we all need to... She's real. I don't know. I I feel like... I'm trying to feel... what What are like the top three cryptids? Bigfoot. A bonum a a Okay, we've discovered someone's broken Hannah. Abominable. I'm never doing that again. Snowman. I'll never be able to do it again. Is that the same as Bigfoot or different? I think they're all in the same family, aren't they? Mine is mine's a bit of a niche one. I read this book I read these books by this man and we talk about it in our bonus episodes. I read these books by a guy called Richard Lehman. They're very like slasher porn and they're a bit freaky. They're a bit scary. They're a bit like, they're so obviously written by a man, but they're so well written and so good that I can't get an, I think once like I read when I was, when I was like in my early twenties, I spent about four days just reading these books. I came out a little bit nutty, but I was so, they're comfortingly weirdly. I don't know how they're comforting weirdly. I don't know why they're so comforting, but they are. 
and he writes a book. He's written the, this trilogy of books called Beast House. And it's basically like the first one is what happened at Beast House in the first place. The second is like people go into Beast House when it's open for like ghostly tours because of the beasts. And then the last one is like the most recent, like they've become a really big business and other people getting murdered. But anyway, there are these beasts that are like white and like smooth all over and their willies have got little mouths on the end with teeth in them. I don't want this beast to be real at all. I do. And you've read out some of the fucking... I've, yeah, I started reading it on... They're uh, awful. They are the worst... This woman, lots of women fancy them and have sex with them because they're so attractive. It's honestly the worst literature I've ever heard in no, my life. No, it's brilliant. I hate it. It's so good. There is a whole swathe of cryptid erotica. Every so often I, I do oh, I, yeah. I do it for Patreon. And it's all very clearly written by men who have no concept of the female anatomy. And I just, no. it just brings me yeah. so much Yeah, joy. it's like, it's, it's giving incel vibes, yeah. isn't it? You're just like. Well, I just love it. I, I, do you know what? I hate it unless someone's actually a really good writer. Yeah. And it's yeah. warranted. And then I'm like, do you know what? Because he is a brilliant writer. You have to read it. I read it out of it, shit. But he's an amazing writer. There are some amazing books that he's done. And they're also, he's very good at descriptives. You're just in it immediately. And it could be mental. I mean, yeah, he does describe vaginas as pubic thatches every now and again, <laughs> which isn't the best thing. But it's a good book. Yeah. There you go. Pubic thatch is not, it's not what you want to hear, do you know? Not sexy, is it's it really? It's really not. It's really not. It's not, not hot. <laughs> that is not hot I feel like I'm being kink shamed <laughs> yeah I'm kink shamed so I draw the line of pubic thatch yeah. Yeah, I am exactly. I am kink shamed <laughs> in this case it's allowed where can people find you what is your general plug what are you working on let people know we're going to have a live show on Halloween in London we don't have the venue confirmed yet but we will be doing it so anyone in London, if you're, don't just free up your Halloween plans. Yeah, we're going to tell, like, we're, we're hopefully going to get this, like, spooky theatre hall. Yeah. And it's just going to be ghost stories and it'll just be a lovely big theatre show. Do a live show then. And we're on Ghost Huns Pod on Instagram. Um, you can find us Ghost Huns Pod um, on TikTok. And we just post little clips from our podcast. Um, and yeah, just find us there. And, and Ghost Huns is our podcast name. So. And we're going to Edinburgh for the whole month as well. So if anybody's in Edinburgh for the comedy festival, me and Susie will yeah. be there doing shows. We're doing our first live show, actually, in Edinburgh. Yeah, on in the Gilded the Balloon. 27th. So yeah. Saturday, the 27th of August, if you're there, come check us out. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much. Hannah and Susie, thank you so much for joining me. It's been an hour. Oh, this has been so nice. Thank you for having us. Oh, I could have done this for bloody hours. I know. I'm annoyed it's over, actually. <laughs> <laughs>